Urban Therapy with Sunshine 752, and this is your daily go get them is the number 610. For June 4th, 2016, tonight I want to talk to y'all about the things that you would tell the cops versus the things that you wouldn't report to the cops. Actually, you might be the type of person that wouldn't tell the cops anything. I'm borderline that kind of person. I'm basically the type of person that wouldn't call the cops for anything. But I will call the cops if, let's say, if I'm in a car accident and I need to get a, a police report in order for my insurance company to pay out instead of trying to charge me and raise my premiums. And it's a funny thing because in the city of Philadelphia, they're instructed, the police force is, uh, they're, they're instructed not to come out to uh, car, uh, car wrecks unless someone has been hurt or has failed. So if you have a fender bender and you need a, a police report, they make it hard for you because the cops aren't supposed to come out for that. Yeah, y'all, that makes up. There's no sense to that, no rhyme or reason. And that's one of the reasons that, yeah, I guess I have a hard heart when it comes to the police force. I don't like them. Yeah, that's not a big secret. But I'm not, I'm not even a criminal. I'm not saying that I've never committed a crime. I mean, come on, chill, chill, chill. But for the most part, I'm not a criminal. I'm a positive brother, and I'm trying to make things happen out here. But one thing I notice is that the police force is the police force. And they have an agenda of their own. And it's not an agenda that seems to coincide with my people. You know, we are often targeted by the police for negativity. And it's not that that we don't get into, into any trouble, break rules or laws. But when we are targeted for certain things and um, when, other, when we're targeted for certain things and other people are let go, for the same things that we're targeted for. The balance of justice is unbalanced and there's an issue of fairness there that the discretion of the police doesn't seem to help in our favor. So, what are some of the things that you would call the police for? You know, when you start talking about crime, unfortunately, we're conditioned to think violence. Violence and murder. That's what we normally think of when we talk about crime. But there's so many other crimes that can be committed. You know, there are drugs. There's there's a um, there um are all there are a list of misdemeanors that are so long that we couldn't name them right now. But theft. That's definitely a crime. You know, now they've made crimes out of the way that you speak to somebody. So if you, if you make a threat to somebody or if you talk violently to somebody or about somebody, you can be charged with a felony. Eh. Now the question becomes, would you call the police for a dispute like that? More than likely, no. Would you call somebody, would, would you call the police if loud music was being played by your neighbors all night long? You might. It's a legitimate, it's a legitimate complaint, and it's something that the police are supposed to handle. Now, how far they handle it, it's going to differ from place to place. It's also going to be dependent upon the attitude and the energy that <clears throat> the offender is giving to the police if they decide to come to their door, because they don't. You don't have to answer the door for the police. You don't have to. It's not against the law. They can get a warrant. You think they're going to go get a warrant for for um, a disturbing the peace violation? Depends on where you live. It really does depend on where you live. But I'm, I'm going to I'm going to say this because I don't want to be I don't want to get into a police bashing type of of uh, attitude or action tonight. I'm really just curious to know what are some of the things that would make you call the police on somebody because there are neighborhoods just like mine where there's a lot of drug dealing but we don't call the cops on our drug dealers we just don't that's family business so if there are other incidents of incidences of crime related to the drug sales then we have to handle things our own way like let's say if the clientele of the drug dealers in other words the crackheads and dope fiends if they start breaking into people's clothes, um, um, cars and breaking into people's houses, then we have to do something about that. 
But we know that the cops aren't going to handle that. What are the cops going to do if somebody steals your, your car stereo? What are you going to do? You're not going to get that car stereo back, and there ain't nothing they, they're going to do about it. Not in this city. Now, in other cities, they do an investigation. And there's a likelihood that they could find out who did something to you, who violated you, but not in this city. Not in most major cities. They don't care about who got robbed. You can, They can rob your house. Somebody can rob your house and take everything that you had. Are the cops going to try to retrieve your property back? Not in this city, they won't. Then again, it depends on where you live in this city. So they handle things in a different way. But I guess we have enough crime in a city like mine to override any little small petty crimes. You know. Only crimes that are really petty, though, are the ones that you don't care about. When it's something that you care about, it's not a petty crime. It's a significant crime. All crime should be looked at as significant by the police. So, maybe maybe there are certain things you would call the police for. Maybe there are certain things that you wouldn't. Some people call the police for everything. They really are dependent upon the police force. And maybe that works for them. I can't front. I can't front. Like, that's a, that's a concept that's hard for me to accept or believe. But hey, you never know. You never know. I know that <clears throat> there used to be, they used to have an emblem on the police police uh, uniforms, the, the badges and the, the, the police cruisers that said to serve and protect. If you notice, in a lot of places, they have taken that emblem off. Doesn't It doesn't say to serve and protect anymore. You have to ask yourself what to serve and protect mean in the first place. Serving who? Protecting who? Have you ever felt protected by the police force? Now, people are going to be quick to say, you, you know what, son, you talk all that stuff about the cops, but as soon as you get in trouble, you're going to be the first one dialing 911. That is about as false of a statement that I can defend. I don't call the cops. I've been assaulted before. I didn't call the cops. I've been robbed before. I didn't call the cops. One of the times I, I, I got robbed, well, my house was burglarized. I called the cops, and we got, our house was burglarized plenty of times when I lived at home with my mom growing up. Two-parent family and, and when we were a single-parent family. Cops never did anything. We called them. It didn't mean anything. It didn't do anything. So, I didn't feel the need to call them anymore. We call them for it. They ain't going to do nothing, and they don't. That's a personal experience, and I'm sure it's not an isolated experience, but it is what it is. Good things happen to those who wait. Great things happen to those who grind, and anything can happen to those who go for theirs. So go hard, go for yours, and I'll tell you like this. I'm not going to say for one second that there are no good policemen out there, because there are plenty. It doesn't matter how many good ones are out there. The only ones that matter to you as far as decency is concerned are the ones that help you. If you can't get a, if you can't find an officer to help you with your problems, which is in the scope of their jurisdiction, then what good is it? I holler y'all later. But um, I want to thank my peoples who came out to the Mind Right and Body Better Fitness program today. Shout out to y'all. I guess I give it y'all later. Have a good night.